Hi, this is Dr. Ryan Kazemi. Atraumatic or non-invasive extraction of teeth are critical in preservation of the supporting bone and soft tissue, which are important as a foundation for dental implant replacement. This is particularly important in the aesthetic zone, uh, where the bone is very thin and excessive forces during the elevation can result in fracture of the bone and its ultimate resorption. This in turn results in loss of bone and soft tissue with defects that are not only insufficient for implant placement, but also uh, compromised from aesthetic standpoint. Atraumatic extraction of teeth can be done with conventional elevators and forceps. However, it requires uh, great skills and experience to do properly. Today, I would like to demonstrate an alternative technique using specialized instruments that are designed for extraction of residual roots in an atraumatic fashion. When implemented properly, this technique helps to preserve the thin buccal plate of bone and also its supporting soft tissue. It also benefits the patient with a faster recovery and less pain as it uh, avoids an excessive tissue flaps or manipulation. This unique surgical instrumentation kit consists of a handle with its rotating platform, a bite plate, uh, specially designed retaining pins, and flexible uh, pulley cables. To demonstrate this technique, let's take a look at this patient who presented with a fractured upper uh, central incisor with uh, retained root. With conventional techniques, uh, the surgeon would need to elevate the tooth using lateral forces uh, on the crestal bone and expand the alveolus until the tooth is subluxated and removed. This often results in fracture of the extremely thin buccal plate of bone and its ultimate resorption. Instead, here we'll first use a periotome to disrupt the gingival attachment. Depending on the length of the root, the density of the bone, and the stability of the root, it might be necessary to slightly mobilize the root using a uh, mesiodistally directed force uh, with a small elevator. Also, the coronal aspect of the tooth must be removed until the root chamber and the canal is reached. So, to begin, a precise channel is prepared in the canal using a uh, surgical burr. Next, a corresponding retaining pin is inserted in the prepared channel and twisted until it's tightened in place. The threads provide a, a good mechanical retention of the pins in the root. The handle has a rotating knob and several slots for insertion of the pulley cables. It also has a bite platform that rests on the adjacent teeth for a uh, stable support. So next, we'll position one end of the pulley cable in the retaining pin, while placing the other end in one of the slots in the handle. It's important that the handle and the pulley are positioned in a way that the cable comes out relatively straight out of the tooth and right down the axis uh, of the root that is to be extracted. At this time, the knob is rotated clockwise until some resistance is felt. Now we'll confirm again that the cable is relatively straight and that the handle platform is uh, quite stable on the adjacent teeth. Next, we'll rotate the knob until resistance is felt and then wait about 30 seconds and then rotate it again for one to two turns. We're going to repeat this intermittent slow rotation and further tightening of the cable with pauses in between until the root is gradually mobilized and then displaced out of the socket. Often a popping sound is heard as the root emerges out of the socket. And here is the root with the retaining pin in place. And here is the socket with the intact uh, buccal plate of bone and soft tissue. Uh, the side can be gently curated and now ready for immediate implant placement if planned.